In this lesson, we're going to look at how to create scene changing buttons. Now, this will go into some depth, so you may need to watch this video a couple of times to kind of get some of the concepts. Um, so I'll try and keep it short, but here we go. So what we need to do then is to create two layers, one for all the scenes to go on and one for all the buttons to go on. We're going to then insert keyframes and frames um, for each scene, so it separates them out. And then we're going to create frames for all the buttons that last as long as all the scenes. This is important so the button sharp on all the pages or all the scenes. Then we're going to look at creating actions, which is snippets of code. So the first action we're going to create is a stop action, which is a timeline action. And the second action we're going to create is a go to and play action, which is a button action. Um, finally, we're going to test our work in the browser and then create a screencast to demonstrate the evidence. So. Once again, inside of our Adobe Animate Interaction folder, I'd like you to create a new folder called Scene Changing Buttons. Once we have this, we can pop on over to Adobe Animate. So once again, we're going to create a HTML5 canvas um, page, and we're going to create our two layers. So the first layer we're going to create is called Button, so Buttons, and then the second layer we're going to create is called Scenes. Once we have that, we're going to create all of the scenes that we need. So scenes can be thought of as pages. And how we create pages is just by inserting a keyframe. So if you right click on, say, frame 20 and then insert a keyframe, this will give you the first page up to frame 19. And then at frame 20, the new page will start. So then if we go to frame 40 and right click and insert another keyframe, so we'll have page 1 from 1 all the way to 19, we have page 2 all the way from 20 to 39 and then finally on frame 60 we don't want any more pages so I'm just going to insert a frame okay so that gives us all three pages that we need the next thing we need to do is label our pages so if we select page if we select frame 1 and then come over to where it says name and let's just call this front page or front cover and then press enter so now you can see there's this little red flag followed by the name. So if we come over to frame 20, let's do the same again. So this one we're going to call page 1. So page 1, and then press enter. And then next we're going to create a page 2. So select page, frame 40. So you notice that it's a circle every time that we're selecting, not this rectangle. And then let's call this page 2. And then press enter. So now we have all of our pages set up. We need, now need the buttons to last as long. So if we actually let's do the let's do some placeholder text first. So let's go back to frame one and make sure we're selecting this top frame and let's just add some placeholder text. So when we move through all of our pages, we can actually see what page we're on. So let's say front page and then deselect it. Now come on to frame 20 and let's call this page one. And then let's come to page two and let's go page two and then deselect it. So now when we go through all of our frames, you'll notice that each page has its own label. And that's great. And that's just a way of us seeing what's on each of those pages. And you can be in, as inventive as with this as you like. Now, let's go to frame 60 on the buttons, right click and then insert frame. Now for the buttons, we don't need any keyframes because we want the buttons to last for every single page. So on this part, let's lock this top layer. So scenes one is now locked. Let's come to the buttons. And let's create a rectangle for our button and then just a piece of text. And we're just going to call this button next. And this button will obviously just go to the next page, which is great. Now, it's the same color as the background. So let's just change that to black. And then let's just move it into place, just make sure we've got it right. Now, before we convert it to a symbol, let's just make sure it does what we expect it to do. So when I press frame 1, the button's there. When I press frame 20, it's still there. So as we move through all the pages, the one constant for every single page will be this button, which is great. So let's convert it to a symbol. So if I select everything to do with that button, and then right click, and then convert to symbol. We're going to call the symbol next button very deliberately I haven't put any spaces in where it says type let's make sure it's selected to button this will not work if it's any of the other types of symbol and then let's press OK 
Now the next step we need to do in order for our actions to work is to change the instance of this button. So with the button selected, come on over to here where it says instance name and let's call it next button. No spaces and you can't have a number at the beginning, okay? So next button, no spaces. Now we've got that set up, we can insert our actions. So what we need to do, when we click on the button, we need it to go to a page and stop, okay? So the action that we're going to put in is the stop action. So if we select this top one, then under the Windows tab, you have this Actions tab. For shortcut and for future reference, it's F9, okay? So here we are. We're on frame one, and we're going to come over to these little arrows where it says Code Snippets, and we're going to create a code snippet. So we want HTML5 Canvas and it's a timeline navigation and it's stop at this frame so double click on that and it will write the code for us actually the only bit of code we need is this bit of code here okay but we won't worry about that all this is just a comment to tell you what the snippet does so the next bit we need to do is come over to frame 20 and then we need to do the same thing again now if you wanted to be really clever about this you could come onto the action and you could just copy this um, onto frame 20. What we're going to do is we're going to do it the hard way. So we're going to go to frame 20, we're going to click on the code snippets again, and then we're going to stop at this frame. Okay? And then we're going to do the same again on frame 40. So click on frame 40, double click on this, stop at this frame. So now we've got all this set up, let's just close these windows and let's just test our work. So let's save our work first. So file, save, and we're going to go to the scene changing buttons folder and we're going to call it scene changing buttons okay now we've got it saved we've got two options here the first is just to go straight down and publish so let's do that first so let's just publish it and take it back to timeline so we can still see that if we head to the folder and we go to the scene changing buttons folder you'll see all of your three folders here so if you click on this one here our browser um, our page should come up. <clears throat> now, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's on the front page and nothing happens, okay? The timeline doesn't move, so we're not seeing page one, page two. It's just staying here, and that's what that stop action has done. It's just stopped on this page. And at the moment, our next button doesn't do anything either. So let's get rid of that. Now, the next thing you can do is if you don't want to keep going to publish, you can just save your work and you can press control enter. Just be aware this doesn't work for every single computer, but control enter brings this up automatically. So it saves your step and it opens up a new tab. Okay, so in future from now, I'm going to just be pressing control enter. And all control enter is doing is launching this here, just saves you an extra step. So let's get our next button working. So now we're going to use a go to and play action on our actual button. So to make this one work, we have to select it first and we can come up to window or press F9 and we want actions. So the action that we want, so let's click on the code snippet. It's still a timeline action or a timeline navigation. And the one we want is this one here, go to frame and play. So double click and it brings this up. Now, one thing you're going to notice, it puts 5 in here, and this basically says go to and play frame 5, which is this one here, and obviously that is not what we want. Okay, so let's come back to our, our button here on frame 1. Sorry, i got to find it. There it is. Um, and we just want to remove this one here. Now, so now we've got that done, let's press Control Enter and see if it all works. So here's our button and let's press it and if it all works you'll now see that it goes to page one okay and it stopped uh, it will, will take a number of seconds for it to actually play because the timeline is quite long so it's going to play through the fr frames after you click it so if i click it again it will take a couple of seconds or not even a second and then it'll say page two and then it will stop so if i click it again hopefully if it all works it should go back to my home page Okay, fantastic, my front page there. So my navigation works, and that's great. So this will get you the three. So what you now need to do is do a screencast, um, and screencast this element here, and then upload it, okay? If you've forgotten how to do a screencast, I'll, I'll attach a, a video to this lesson. Okay, let's move on. So let's do the extension tasks now. 